Hello everyone, this is Amity Sensei. Today I'll introduce you to how to use Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is a perfect app for creating graphic design and editing photos. And using this app, today I want to create a stylish design with text and the image combined. You can see that a part of it that's overlapping is missing here and there, and I want to show you how to do it. We'll use a feature called masks when creating things like this, but I assume there are many people who are not sure how to use masks, so in this video, I'll mainly focus on the use of masks as I explain step by step. For Affinity Photo, it's usually around $22, but since it's on sales right now, it's only around $11. We also have a friend of Affinity Photo called Affinity Designer, and that one too is on sales, also around $11 instead of $22, so I suggest getting both apps. I've done many tutorials covering these two apps too, so it'd be great if you could download them and work on this one today together with me. Okay, let's get started. Alright, let's start. Once you open Affinity Photo, there is a plus button at the upper right, and this is where we start. We'll start by importing image first, and there should be an option that says import images. So tap on that, and now you should be able to see a list of photos from your camera roll. So choose an image of your choice from here. We'll use this image of flowers this time, which is free to download, and I'll put the link in the description box down below. So if you can, please download the image from there and work on this together with me. I'll first explain about some tools in Affinity Photo. We have a tool panel on the left where we can find a crop tool and a selection tool. And in the property panel on the right, we got information about layers, colors, etc. So we'll basically use these tools on the left and on the right, but we also have a panel on the top. So from left we have photo mode, selection mode, and distort mode. We'll mainly be using photo mode and selection mode. If you set a distort mode, then you could make an image distorted like this, but we won't be using this today. We'll mostly be using this photo mode this time. So make sure that it's set as photo mode first, and we'll start with trimming. So we'll trim an image. Right now, the image is portrait in size, but we'll make it landscape. Just like this, as you extend it to both sides, you can see the angle of view. So extend it horizontally like this. Once it's trimmed, as you can see, we have the gap on both sides, so we'll be filling in with black. The fastest way to do this is to add a fill layer at the very top. At the upper right in the layer panel, once you tap on the plus button, you can find the fill layer. And as you select this, this solid layer will appear at the top. So set the color black. Now you should have this solid layer like this, so long tap and bring it to the very bottom. So now we have the layer of flowers on top and then the solid black layer underneath. Okay, we're all set. Now we'll add some text and decorations to the image from here. We'll work on this layer of flowers first. Right now it's a bit too small, and so we want to make it slightly bigger, so while having the layer selected, grab a selection tool or move tool, the second one from the top on the left, and now you can rotate it like this and make the size bigger as well. By pulling the edge of a bounding box like this, it gets bigger in size. So turn this 45 degrees to the left like this to set the position. Once we set the size, we want to lock this layer so it won't move. To lock, there is this option with three dots, and as you tap it, there should be this button that says lock. Select this and now it won't move anymore as you can see right here. So remember to lock anything you don't want it to be moved. Next, we'll insert text. To do so, go to the very button in the tool panel on the left. There is this A mark right here, and this is a text tool. So select this and start typing in text. 
Just like this, once you type in text, we'll adjust the size. Remember that when changing the size, grab this selection tool or move tool. And this move tool can be found in a second from the top left corner. You can change the size while keeping the text tool selected, so keep in mind to grab a selection tool in case you want to do that. This is actually something important, but many people forget about this, so please remember this. Once the size is set, we will change the font. To do so, go to the panel on the right. There is this A icon right here too, so tap it, and here you can set details for your text including the font size, font, and inclination, or set a center, left align, or right align. So set your font from here. In Affinity Photo, you can install your original font as well, but I doubt many of you do that, so this time use this font we have by default called Futura. Futura is a font that's bold and firm, but if you prefer something thinner and feminine, it's totally fine to change it too, so please use whatever font you prefer. Once the font is set, let's set the position of these letters. We could have them left aligned and center aligned. And we'll be erasing some parts of this flower that overlap with the letters, but for now we'll set them in a way that they look good together with the letters. This can be done better if you have a good sense of style, but please try your best here. For those who don't know what to do, you could just follow my style right here as well. Next, we'll try to create a rectangle shape grid line. To create a rectangle, go to the second mark from the bottom in the left tool panel, a rectangle tool. So select this and drag the screen randomly like this. Now we have a solid white rectangle position right here. To change this position, do the same thing. Grab a move tool to adjust the position. And to change the color, use this color palette. Here we have two of these circles at the top but they are the color both for fill and stroke. So since we want to fill the middle one to be transparent, select the diagonal mark, and for the frame on the line, we want to make it white in color, so grab white from the color picker. This way we have this rectangle with the frame line set white. When you want to adjust the line thickness, go to the panel that says FX on the right. Here we have an option that says outline. Select this and now a panel should appear at the bottom. This is a bit tricky, but basically we can set details for the outline here. Right now I'm selecting the radius option, dragging both sides. And you can tell that the line is slightly getting bigger and bigger. In Affinity Photo, it's the quickest way to alter the frame thickness of this rectangle and other things here. So please remember and apply this method to your design. Okay, from here, I will talk about Mask Tool in Affinity Photo. As we take a look at these letters and the flower, there are some overlapping parts. And what we want to do now is to erase some parts around the letters that are overlap. What this means is that we'll set this to hide, but to do so, select the layer for these letters, and as you tap the plus button at the top, you can find a bottom that says mask layer. So tap on this, and now you should have a sort of white frame on the side of these text. Also, as you tap this arrow mark right here, the mask layer itself gets added underneath as you can see right here. As you trace with a white brush or a black one on the mask layer, a part of the layer becomes invisible. It almost looks like it's gone. So let me try it here. First, select the brush from the tool panel on the left, and you can control the brush thickness at the very bottom. Grab black for color, trace in black, and the part you trace will be hidden. So make sure that the mask layer is selected and color in black. 
as I trace a part of this, you can see that a part of yourself, your, is hidden right now. So as I trace in black, a part of the text trace will be hidden. Let me trace this in white. As I pick white from the color and trace, the part of hidden will appear again. So white is for display mode and black is for hidden mode. Make sure to remember this, so black color is to hide and white color is to show. So by making use of the color of this brush, you'll be tracing any unnecessary parts in black. And always make sure that this mask layer is selected right here. So this time grab black color and trace a part of this text where it overlaps with the flower with the brush. This way, this overlapping part gets erased completely like this. So for this blossom too, trace where the flower should be displayed in front and erase like this which adds more depth to it. That's what we want to do it this time. So in the same way, go ahead and erase any overlapping parts. Just like this, I managed to erase them, but we can show or hide the mask layer too, so you can see which part of it is hidden. This is a little thing, but erasing some petals here really helps add more depth to this flower. Now let's work on the frame layer too. For this layer, we'll first rasterize. To do so, while keeping this layer selected, there is this mark with three dots at the upper left, where you can find an option that says rasterize a layer. So tap it. Now, same as earlier, add masks. In order to add masks, select the mask layer from the plus button right here. This way, the mask layer is added underneath the arrow, and now let's review. Trace with a white or black brush, and black is to hide and white is to show. So this time, select black color, and we want the flower to be in front. Make sure to erase lines like these. Since we can zoom in like this, a tip here is to zoom in and erase so that it can be done nicely. Okay, just like this, I'm done with adjusting the mask. As we look at the layers here, we have both a rectangle layer and a text layer, each with a mask to apply and a part of it hidden. We could finish right here, but let me add some decorations in the end. Add a new layer on top from the plus button, and I thought of adding some sort of pollen, so select a brush tool on the left. There's a brush tool on the right too, and as you select it, it will show you a bunch of brush options like this. Here you can find a brush called Splatter that looks like this. So select this and grab white for color. As you roughly trace with the brush like this, you can express in a way as if these powders splashing over the image. On a side note, you can change the brush thickness as well as the opacity level from the bar at the bottom. So set them according to your preferences and draw with some powders splashing around the flower like this. Don't put too much pressure though, as you recognize your writing pressure, so if you put too much of it, you have a sort of big mass that's white in color, so a tip would be to draw lightly. So just like this, try to spread them across the image. If you take a look at the layers, we should have this layer of a splatter brush added. And for this one too, we'll apply mask in the same way we did earlier. Select the mask layer from the plus button, open the mask layer with the arrow, so this one is selected right now. Select the brush again, grab black or white color, and start tracing any parts you want to hide. 
So this time it will be around this flower in the middle as we don't want too much spray over it with a splatter brush. So trace them in black. In case you find later you erase too much, and just trace the part you want it back again. So trace in white as it will switch to a display mode. This time I want all of you to remember this mask tool where you add a mask layer and trace in black to hide and trace in white to show. So these are the key takeaways of this video. Once you know how to do these things, you can definitely take your drawing to the next level. So for today, please remember this mask layer. Alright, just like this, it's complete. What do you think? With these texts along with the use of this rectangle frame and the splatter brush in balance, I think it looks pretty solid. Did you manage to do it too? Honestly, this tutorial was a bit difficult, so I want you to give it a try a couple times if you can. And please remember how to apply this mask layer function I've mentioned many times today. To export, you can do so from the mark with three dots right here. I'm not going to do it right now, but if you can, please post on Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag MTSensei, and I'll definitely check them out. So it would be great if you could share your work with me. I run my online community called iPadMate, and there I do many tutorials covering Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. The most recent one was about how to make a thumbnail for YouTube, which can be done in Affinity Photo. So I explain about how to make them step by step, and I also do live streaming for around an hour teaching members about the mask layer, which was mentioned today, the use of shape tool, etc. So if you want to learn more, please check out my iPadme community. I'll leave the link down below. Alright, that's all for today. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. I find the use of Fini Photo as well as Fini Designer rather difficult, so if you have anything you want me to draw using a Fini Photo and a Fini Designer, please let me know in the comments down below, and I'll definitely check them in my free time. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye bye!